All right, guys, here we go. I'm here in the library in one of their rooms. This is a nice room. I'm gonna put on my glasses so I can see a little bit. These are just readers. One day I have to get my um, prescription back. They broke and I haven't really used them since. But check out this room, it's cool. This is gonna be the GuideCast pre prequel. Got the mic. I, need, I wish it was a little bit taller so I can put it right there. But um, it's going to be right here. It deserves to be right here. You need to get a tripod and um, make it be able to stand, especially in situations like this where I can just adjust it and have it in my face because you're going to see me. I'm a man with a mic. A man with a mic. All right, guys. But anyway, you know it's there. And uh, we're also recording this on my laptop so we can have uh, clear audio also. All right, guys, we're gonna get started quickly. This is a long awaited thing. The Guy Cast prequel. Don't know exactly what everything will be about, but uh, I tell you what, we're gonna do some talking today. Just one man, one mic. All I need is one mic, one mic. You're going to hear a lot of hip-hop references uh, in this guide cast. Uh, I got the guide cast. Everybody does a podcast. Everybody does vid cast. But I got the guide cast because I'm a Google local guide. And I said, that would be great. Guide cast. I'll know there's a Chrome cast. There's a this cast, that cast. But I didn't see too many guide casts. So, this is the guide cast vid cast podcast but we know it is a guide cast or the gc with gr so i tell you what today we're going to go down the episodes i had an episode list way back in april <laughs> i was supposed to start this on my birthday i was going to start it probably before my birthday on my grandfather's birthday which was may the first my grandma's birthday was, was the 22nd but I never got a chance. I never took the chance, the opportunity to start it. I just want something new, something different. But today I'm going to start it at the Dayton Library, main library downtown in this beautiful room. It's a, a reserve room. So I just showed you a little bit of it. And we are going to uh, just glad that we're here. I'm glad we're here. You see my gray is coming in. Uh, every time I shave it, it comes in quicker. <laughs> wow, that's that's pretty long there. What? Anyway, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. It must have been wrapped up in there. But um, just had to, like I normally say, I have a a uh, bipolar goatee because it shifts and it changes. And it's really the operator era. It's me that cuts it. <laughs> and uh, I just don't, I can't cut it straight sometimes. Sometimes it's hot. When it grows, it's good. It's thick. But sometimes it's, it just looks like whatever, so I have to cut it off. So anyway, let's get it started. Episode one, guys. A um, little bit of history on myself. Uh, I've been sick. I've had high blood pressure years ago. 30 years ago, I had a duodenal ulcer, lost so much blood. Um, still living maybe days or so. Never know. Might not have been here. But I am here, guys. So I have this um, thing that my grandfather used to say. It's an old Negro spiritual. <laughs> it's an old Negro spiritual song. This may be the last time. This may be the last time. And, you know, he used to say that all the time. I don't know. This may be the last time or this time, another time this year. Or whatever he said, you know, so that was going to be the name of the podcast. This may be the last time podcast because I've been going through a series of medical um, issues in the last real heavy in the last, uh, let's say, eight to 10 months since last November, December. Uh, things I've never had to experience. I had to get a um, had to be on medicine. That's one thing. Tried it last year. Stopped it. Uh, tried it this year. Now I'm, I'm currently off. My blood pressure is cool and um, I got to maintain it. And it's about the food, guys. It's definitely about eating to live. But I still like to talk about this may be the last time. 
And I, I do it as a joke, but uh, I definitely wanted the first episode be, to be called This May Be The Last Time, but I was going to twist it. So I'm going to twist it into having something I call, and I don't know if anyone else uses this, but it's a live life list. Everybody talks about the bucket list, but I want to do a live life list. So we're going to do our top 10 live life list. Same as the bucket list, but a live life list. What do you want to do? You want to go out of the country? Do you want to make a million dollars? Do you want to live in Florida? Do you want to see the Grand Canyon? Do you want to parachute? Do you want to parasail? A parasail, by the way, that was fun. Uh, there's a fly in here, so occasionally you're going to see me waving my hands like there's a fly in here. But uh, may get him, may not. He may live. He may not. It may be the last time for that. There you see it. Maybe the last time for that fly, because I don't like flies, guys. I don't like flies. But that's the live life list. And that's what we need to do. Create your live life list. Basically, talk about what you like to do. It can be five things, 10 things. Uh, it can be 20 things. And if there's already someone out there saying they want have a live life list, um, you know, that's fine. But if not, and it's brand new and it's something some words we've never focused on putting together. This is it. Hashtag live life list. And it it takes a mixture of things. Living your best life. Taking your bucket list. Uh, doing the things that you want to do. Living life. Dancing like it's your last dance. Live life list. So start doing that. And I'm going to talk about a few things I want on my live life list. And I'm going to have to actually formulate or create a full live life list but one of them i know i would like to be wealthy and i have a specific number but right now i'll just say the million dollars you know i want to get the million dollars of course i need to get the fifty thousand i need to get the hundred thousand or five hundred thousand before that but i'd like to have the million dollars i want to put that on my live life list because that would allow me to live life to the fullest. But guess what? If I only have the money that I make from content creation or photography or whatever work that I'm doing, I used to do a lot of landscaping. I just currently had a oh man. I just currently <laughs> had employment in Tennessee. I was a driver for a wealthy person. Um, not doing that anymore. Just didn't fit my lifestyle. Uh, so whatever work I'm doing, I would like to create. Uh, I could use that money as well. I would like to create a million, but I could use that money as well to live my life to the fullest. And, and that's what it's about. Living your life to the fullest, the live life list. So if you are in the sound of my voice, if you hear me right now, create your live life list. You can share it with me or you can keep it to yourself and um, you can still make a bucket list. That's cool. But I don't want to kick the bucket. <laughs> I wonder where that came from anyway. Kick the bucket. This may be the last time. Same thing. It may be the last time. I don't know. But anyway, so that is some of the things that I wanted to focus on in that episode. But also, man, we've been through the pandemic. You see my air quotes. We've been through the pandemic and we've lost a lot of people. I know some people that were personal. I mean, uh, close to my family that were lost uh, because of COVID or complications with COVID. So it was their last time. You know, recently my friend just lost her brother. So it was his last time, you know, and, and they bring uh, emotion into our life. We deal with grief, we, grief. We deal with grief uh, various ways. It hurts us. We celebrate. It depends on who's dealing with it. But you just never know. It may be the last time that you uh, have the time to talk to somebody. Um, and again, why I, I didn't name the full podcast, this may be the last time podcast is because it does sound pessimistic. And I want you guys to know that I stay positive, you know, um, I stay positive, but there's certain things is, is reality. There's certain things is reality. I'm about to use some chapstick. I keep licking my lips. So. You know, I deal with I deal with reality as well. So this may be the last time there's different ways you can say it. But again, I was having fun with it. My grandfather always said, and, and I'll show you a clip, maybe not here, but at some point 
I'll show you a clip where he actually said it. He said it a few times for me on tape. And this one, he said it to kind of please me, I know, um, as a joke. But it's something he said all the time. We would have conversations in the uh, bedroom or in the living room or wherever we would be. And he would frequently say it because he was actually buried alive uh, in, two in, 1990, in 1980 is what it was. So he's like 50 years old, buried alive. He was dead. He was literally dead. My uncle Michael, um, they knew about how far he was. They knew how the hole was. They were doing construction together. So they took the big machine and dug all the dirt because it caved in. This, this is my understanding at, at 10 or 11, and I heard some little bit more about it. But they dug all of the dirt out, and my Uncle Michael said, okay, he was about there, let me dig. And my understanding is my Uncle Michael started digging through the dirt to uh, save his father, man. He saved his father, pulled him out of the dirt. My understanding is he, he gave him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, which, which gave him a breath of life, man. You understand my grandfather was was dead. He gave him that breath of life. And I actually say that in the song. His son gave the breath of life because God was there. And I say that as a double entendre. His son, God was there. His son, grandpa's son, God was there. So it depends on how you want to look at it. But my uncle Michael saved my uh, grandfather. But his life was so great after that, so to speak, after he was re rehabilitated. But... Um, he always had this thing in the back of his mind, which I started to get in the back of my mind. I, I tell you the truth. When some of these things started to happen to me, especially when they did that, whatever it was, where they went up through my body and they said, you can't feel it, but they said it went through my heart and I forgot what it's called. Um, I forgot what it's called right now, but, uh, anyway, they said you couldn't feel it, but I, I know I felt it. I felt something, felt the lights or something. And I was just like, man, this, this is crazy. This is the last time. You know, get out of here, fly. And uh, it may be the last time for that fly. So, okay. So anyway, so so I know his feeling. Uh, not, I didn't die, you know, but it was just, it was a scary thing. So that's all he said for the next 20, 30 years. And maybe the last time, you don't know, not going to last long. And then he had a really, really big issue once my grandfather passed, I mean, once my grandmother passed away. So it, uh, that was 2011. And after that, it was pretty much, he passed in 2013. So he didn't want to really live anymore. So in his mind, he knew that it was the last time. So, but it was 30 years later after he had, was buried alive. So you just never know. You can keep saying, people say, oh, you'll bring it up on you. And, and things happen as they happen. I believe in the power of your subconscious mind, bringing things together. But some things, they happen as they happen. No coincidences, but things happen as they happen, whether it's the universe or whether it is, um, uh, I don't want to say coincidence. I, I just said it wasn't coincidence. But whether it's the universe or whether it's brought up on by yourself, things happen. So uh, that was, this may be the last time. And... Again, I like to focus on the positive. Uh, I don't want it to be the last time. Don't want to speak it. Like they say, you speak life and death in your tongue. But again, I do play with it. I do talk about it. And that's why this episode would have been, this may be the last time. So guys, live life to the fullest and, and, and be as great as you can. I mean, I've done so many things in my life. I've created so many things. I've helped so many people. And I still have goals. I still have a live life list. I still have things I want to accomplish. And um, it's, it's, it's not easy, but I'm going to do it. 50 years old, guys. So at least I'm getting this started. And this was never anything I really wanted to do. I have so many videos. I've went viral. Uh, I receive income online. And uh, it, it's a great thing. I've had stocks before. I've had investments before. No real estate. But I like to have some. And there's still things I got to do, but I also am aware if I don't eat to live, if my blood pressure is high, if I got high cholesterol, if I got diabetes, if I have these things that that plague the community, the black communities, of course, but all of the communities, everybody's dying for this. But those things, if I don't take care of that, if I don't eat to live, it may be the last time. All right, guys. So 
Uh, I think what I'm going to do is every episode is going to be about 15 minutes. So I'm going to cut this one short. Nope. It's 15 minutes right about now. So we're going to move on. So employee versus worker. And uh, I'm not going to make all of these 15 minutes, but employee versus worker. I just I just left a job, man. Uh, it probably could have been lucrative. It was a I work for a wealthy gentleman uh, in Tennessee. I mean, he's been living his life, living his best life for the last who knows, four or five months. And, and before that, because he, he built up as well. But at, at this point, he sold his company. So he had just wealth and time, you know, and of course, he's creating other stuff, but he had wealth and time. And I was his driver. I was his driver. I was his employee. And I had to do what he says. <laughs> and I tell you guys, I'm not a great employee. I'm a great worker. I'm a great task guy. I, I'm a great creator, great designer, but an employee, I'm not. Great cameraman, great videographer, but I am not a great employee. So most of you guys out there are employees, so you know what it is. And you know what it is to create a business. Did I stop? Hello. Uh-oh. You working? Something's slowing up. I guess it's taking taking a lot of time. So don't know if this is going to record correctly. So I'm going to stop that. Uh, let's see. Stop that. The guy cast. Now that wasn't 15 minutes. What's going on here? Task guy. A great creator, great designer, but an employee. I'm not great. So I don't know if these are going to record longer than, that's weird. I know I have much, much space on this laptop. So let's see what we got here. Huh. 370 gigabytes. So don't know why it stopped, but let's see if we can keep recording. Uh, all right. Why is it going so slow? Not sure. Hello? All right. So anyway, it is... Oh, I know what it was doing. It was actually recording, but it, it had uh, magnified. It went down. So anyway, being an employee, I mean, it's so many things. I don't even know the technical aspects of an employee. But what I do know is I'm not the guy who needs to be under a boss. And I know people say, hey, that's not structured or you need direction or you can be a leader, but you have to be a great leader and get things done or you won't be able to accomplish stuff. I've accomplished a lot of stuff, a lot of wealth I haven't accomplished, a lot of cash flow going through my hands I have accomplished, but I still don't believe that I need to accomplish those things to be or be an employee to accomplish those things. And I just see uh, I'm using the word worker because um, I know I mean businessman. I know I have a, an independent business and I know it's uh, it's a struggle. And and I've had three independent businesses heavy in the last 10 years. And that's content creator, videographer, photographer, uh, mostly of the last 10 years is where I made most of my income. And then for three years of that 10 years. Uh, I started and I faded the other and I started a landscaping business. So I did that very heavy until the doctor said, you know, I wouldn't do a lot of that anymore. And then um, I do a lot of DoorDash. Uh, I've only tried that this year. And then I started working in Tennessee. So uh, those were my major um, tasks or work or, or jobs or gigs or whatever you want to call them, you know, and again, being an employee was the hardest because I'm just not, uh, not that I can't follow directions. I'm a great leader, but I'm a great follower also, but it, it leaves me restricted being an employee. You get restricted and you're not able to create. Like if I was at work today, uh, which I'm going to DoorDash, but if I was at work today, I couldn't just stop 
in the middle of the day and, and uh, start working on the guide cast. You know, they don't want that. They don't want that to happen. Even when I'm with, uh, when I was with the employer here in Tennessee, I mean, I couldn't just stop and do everything I wanted to do. Now, it was a lot of breaks in between. Uh, we, we was living a great life. It would have been a great life for a live life list, you know, uh, been in five star hotels, uh, been three, four or five different states uh, in the last four months, man. And this, uh, back and forth and it's great and been doing things. And with his wealth, I've been able to do certain things that I've never been able to do. Um, and so it's a great thing if you have an employer paid on time. It's an employer who pays you on time and who who lets you do the work that you are accustomed to and, and who's great for you. I'm sure Apple, great employees. Um, I'm sure Google, great employees. But Larry Page, uh, Sergey Brin, you know, they are in an ultimate place and position, you know, and there have been employees before. Elon Musk, Elon Musk has been an employee. Bill Gates, I don't know if he was an employee. Uh, possibly, I don't, I don't know his history like that, but I know he owns Microsoft now, and he he owns a majority of a lot that goes that goes down everywhere, really. <laughs> you know, Windows is amazing. You know, um, I know some people will argue with that, but Windows, that's amazing. So my thing is. The, they, a person may never see that type of wealth, but if you remove yourself from being an employee, and specifically me, if I remove myself from being an employee, that's when I create that type of wealth. If I become a worker for myself, and again, I'm saying employee, employee versus worker, a worker for myself, I can create that kind of wealth. Even with my landscaping, although he wanted me to have the grass done, the, the mulching done, trees cut and all of that stuff done at a certain time it was in my schedule you versus um when my employer said move i had to move when he said drive i had to drive you know if i had an issue it was an issue when i left for a break i had to come back real quick and same thing with you if you work at a, a corporation it's the same thing you know you got to move when they say move and uh you may make a lot more money <laughs> you know you may have a lot more uh, wealth and opportunity, but the, the opportunity you have when you're a worker or a business owner or a boss, I'm a boss. <laughs> if you have that, you know, it's it's a lot better. So that that's my little piece on employee versus worker and how it works for me. Don't want to be an employee anymore. Wouldn't like to be an employee. I will gig work all of my life if it meant being an employee again. So it's going to have to be some excellent circumstances before I become an employee again. So that's that. Now, that would have been episode two. Uh, I welcome your comments, questions, concerns, and you tell me how you feel in the comments below. And we'll get this thing started, guys. All right. It's the pre the prequel to the guy cast. I'm here at the Dayton Library and uh, main library downtown. I'm in one of their rooms, which is great. I'll let you see it a little bit later. And we'll look at it. But let's go on. What would you tell your younger self? Let me push pause on this. I want to make sure this is recording. Let me push pause on this. I want to make sure this is recording. So it's definitely recording. So it's definitely recording. And it was just... Uh, what happens, I have this uh, recording program that uh, squeezes, uh, magnifies down. So it looked like it was moving. It was stuck, but it wasn't. It was just moving really quick, but in a small amount of space. So what would I tell my younger self? Well, I tell you, it's, it's, um, it is, I'll tell you a few things I would tell you, my, my younger self, but I'm going to tell you some things that I tell my son right now, which is like my younger self. So the first thing is, which everybody says, never quit, man. Never quit. I had so many ideas when I was young, so many things when I was young. And, and one I always come back to is I was this rapper 
and I wanted to be positive. I wanted to talk, bringing up your people. I didn't want to do this cheesy, everybody rocks and mics, everybody dances, likes. I didn't want to do that. But as I was becoming this, this informative rapper, let's call it, preachy rapper. Some people call me a preachy rapper. But as I was becoming this rapper, I had an opportunity to do a video for a, an, um, a major uh, corporation called CG&E, Cincinnati Gas and Electric Company, which is now Duke Energy. And it was amazing. I got paid $3,000 to do a video where I'm just dancing. They had me on green screen and I'm like 19 years old, I believe. 19, 18, was 18, 19, 19 years old. Um, and uh, I was in front of green screen. I'm dancing. Listen up, children. If anybody can find this video, get it to me quick. Because I left my copy at my, at my girlfriend's house from back in the 90s. So I don't know where that is. I know it's got to be somewhere on video somewhere. It's me. I'm on a tree. Well, I'm not really on a tree. I'm on a, a pole. Listen up, children. And hear us talk. We're going to take you on an electric walk. It's something everybody ought to know. How electricity is ready to go. So that was actually the first rhyme out of the hundreds or probably not hundreds, but out of a lot of rhymes that I wrote in my life and poetry at that point, that was the first rhyme that I ever had somebody else write for me. They actually gave me a script and I said, that sounds good, but I'm going to flip it because they was like, listen up children and something you should know. Everybody knows they're going on the flow, whatever. But I was like, nah, nah, we ain't going that. We're going to do a little rock Kim up in this mug. Listen up children and hear us talk. We're going to take you on electric walk. It's something everybody ought to know how electricity gets ready to go. So anyway, I was on this pole. I had like on this stuff. I was a green screen. So look for that, guys. It was cg and &E. Somebody in this world has that tape. If you can find that tape, you'll be well rewarded. I don't know exactly how, but I'm going to reward you. I promise you. Andrew Durbin was the producer. So if you know Andrew Durbin, a producer in Cincinnati at the time, uh, he created a video through Cincinnati Bell, if I'm not mistaken, for CG&E. So if you can find that, I would love it. But anyway, my point to that was I created that video, $3,000 I got paid. My cousin got paid $1,000? I don't know. Anyway, but all she did was electricity, electricity. It's electric. I did that part. Electricity, electricity. So that was her. And 300 bucks for it or a thousand bucks. I don't remember. But anyway, I got paid that money. And if I would have followed that path, if I would have stayed consistent on the path of cheesy rap, which if you know me, you may know the Obama rap. That's cheesy rap, man. McCain rap, cheesy rap, Informa informative rap, Sarah Palin rap, cheesy rap, Ghost on the Stick, Joe Biden rap. Those are cheesy raps. They're not songs that you would put up against Dr. Dre, Eminem, Jay-Z, Nas, but they're songs that sound fun. Barack, 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 Barack Obama, Joe Biden. So when I say Joe, you say Biden. McCain is okay. Sarah Palin. Those are some hits, man. They've got some hits. Viral. Went viral. In the election season of 20, 2008, I didn't even want to do stuff like that. And I set the mic down in 92, tried to help the, the hip hop and rap community with the first hip hop publication. What? In Cincinnati. I got some, baby. I don't have them all because some of them got lost. But, uh, you know, we got some of this stuff. Man. We got some history, man. There's Marky, rest in peace. Butch Gibson uh, took that picture. Not only the Butch Gibson take that image uh he actually helped me start this stuff I, I jacked that from a book i put the copyright there but that was copyright infringement i just took it but um you know the thing is is guys we we had ideas and it was certain things i wanted to do and uh i could have done some fun things for kids i could have been yo gaba gaba or not yo gaba gaba What's the what's the guy with the yellow? I think is that Gabba Gabba? I don't know that that guy with the yellow, a little bit more feminine than me, 
But I could have been that guy. You know what I'm saying? I could have been Barney rapping or something. But it was just, oh, I want to be this. I want to be that. And and that's fine. But I would, uh, what was the advice I was giving myself? <laughs> Stay consistent. I don't know what it was. I had to, had to listen to it. Uh, I'm going to let you listen to it. No, I'm going to listen to it. And I'm going to just tell you. But be, stay consistent and be fearless. So, Greg, when you're doing this cheesy rap and nobody wants you to do it, doesn't matter. If you're going to get paid $3,000 for something, do that cheesy rap. Now, there there is a... I wouldn't do gangster rap, so it's not the same. Uh, so, I'll do something that you respect and that you help others and that doesn't go against your thought process or it doesn't it's not an integrity against your thought process it, it gives integrity and, and if gangster music is for you it's for you but for me it wasn't but for my younger self i would say don't be afraid of the everybody that's going the whole gangster tip or the whole hit the rock hard because i'd be in a different position now uh maybe he wouldn't have came up with the obama rap maybe he would have came up with a different rap you know but i would tell my younger self be fearless um, keep doing the things you want to do. See the vision and, and definitely listen to older people, man. Listen to older people because they have the knowledge and you don't want to hear it because you're young, you're free, you're wild, you're people paying for your stuff. But if you listen to older people, they have this knowledge that you'll get when you get older. So at least follow their path. I was just telling my son this uh, earlier that um son right now i'm one of the most intelligent people you know am i a rocket scientist no but i have an intelligence i have an understanding and i'm able to educate you bring out what you have that's going to make you a better person i have that and i've lived life for 50 years i've lived life for 50 years and if you want to be technical about it uh, you know, just doing things in life for 45 years as, as I got older and I had to do these certain things uh, that my mom wasn't doing daily tasks. So I had to go to kindergarten. My mom tells me this story where the guy pulled my hair and the teacher said, nah, you got to pull his hair back, which is, I don't know, doing to others. I doubt it. So anyway, I guess I pulled his hair back and whatever. I used to have a big afro or something like that. Afros. But anyway, you know, um, that's just, <laughs> I don't know where, anyway, so, but I told my son that, listen to me, I've had a life experience, man, and if you do these things, nine times out of ten, you'll probably be wealthy, but if not, you'll be on a great path of life, because I've been on a, a great path of life, some things have been up, some things have been down, but it's been a path of life. And your mom has some great experience too. But as far as in your life, I'm the one with the most life experience, the most intelligence on uh, life. Now, his mom, I don't know anything about music, uh, mathematics. She's like, whatever. I can't teach him nothing about math that he probably don't already know. But when it comes to life experience, and, and guess what? I'm not even using the math from high school that I've used. I just know what plus is, five plus five. I know you better have my change. Boy better have my money. No, nah, I'm going to say that. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the only math I'm using. So, again, you got to know this math, get through school, everything. But right now, you listen to this knowledge and stay on this path. And I know you don't want to hear 90% uh, of the stuff I'm talking about. But you stay on this path, you're going to be a great son, at least, if nothing else. A great son. So... That's some of the stuff I would tell my younger self. Another thing I would say myself is set my goals, man. I had this thing. I always set my goals. I always saw my vision. And then when I get close to my goal or near my goal, I would try to bring somebody in on my goal or bring get in on somebody else's goal and say, hey, we can work together. You do need a team. I will say that too. get a team, Greg, as your younger self. But when you're doing your goals, let them be your goals. If your team can't function well with your vision and your team's vision, or if your vision is not your team's vision or vice versa, if everybody has individual visions, which they do, there's always a Michael Jackson. You know, there's a Jackson 5 and there's a Michael Jackson. So one person is going to 
always shine and maybe two or three people are going to shine. Bill Gates shine. Uh, I can't think of his name real quick, but he shined as well, but not as much as Bill Gates. So I don't know how that structure was, but Bill Gates shined. Steve Ballmer, he shined as well, but not as much as Bill Gates. So there's always going to be different views and different uh, goals. But if you can't get a team that fo focuses on your goals as well, you know, you hang with that team as much as you can. Uh, you look at somebody, I just I just tried Shaq's, Shaq's uh, chicken, <laughs> chicken shack, chicken shack. Ah, I wonder if he was going to call it that, but he called it big chicken. Interesting. So I tried Shaq's big chicken restaurant the other day and uh, yesterday. And I know he was great on the team. He was great with Kobe. Uh, but look what he's doing after the team. Look at Magic Jan Johnson, what he's doing after the team. So they had these personal goals. They created this wealth and this team um, camar camaraderie. camaraderie, and uh, But now they're doing things on their own. And, of course, he still does broadcasting and stuff like that. Shaq, I'm talking about. And... and um, Magic Johnson owns a theater, so that's a definitely a big team and a big corporation effort. But, you know, it's their personal goals. So follow your personal goals and, and accomplish them, you know, and success and goals. They don't always fit. I mean, they, they don't all they're not always on the same path. It's not they're not it's not a synonymous word like j just in basic uh, understanding. You can have success in creating one problem. But your goal may be to pass algebra. I had success on this problem, success on this problem, success on that uh, semester, but your goal is to, to pass algebra. So success can come easy. And many successes, small successes, get you motivated to get to the goal or to, the, to your best accomplishment or your journey, helps you through the journey. The success is the journey and, and uh, the goal is the destination, if you wanted to say that. So, you know, and then you have many goals as well, but these many successes, small successes to help you get through that. So finish your goals. Another thing I would tell my younger self, uh, finish your goals, accomplish your goals, uh, keep having many successes. I've had so many small successes in my life um, and be focused on it. I know people get wealth by being comedians. But I had this thing in my life. At one point, I became very serious, certain tie guy, I had to focus. And if I just would have stayed on that path, things would have been be different. And you hear that a lot. Oh, if I would have, if I would have, if I would have. And these are because I made certain decisions. And some decisions are excuses. Uh, some things I say are excuses, but some things are just uh, life. Like, I had opportunity to go down a bad road, do illegal stuff, but I chose not to. Didn't make the money, but I chose not to do it. It was better for my life. So it wasn't an excuse. It was something that was didn't work with my heart. But you got someone who did illegal stuff and it worked well with their heart and they're still living. So, you know, me personally, make sure your goal is aligned with your vision and your thought process, and then you'll be a little bit better. So, those are some of the things I would tell my younger self. And uh, let me think of one more thing I would tell my younger self. Um, just don't stop, man. Don't stop. And again, that's the cliche. Don't stop. But tell your younger self that you got to keep going, man. And I'm going to make a list of everything I would tell my younger self. And I'm going to share that with you again. So let's move on, guys. How to eat to live. Let's make sure this is recording. All right, how to eat to live. Now, this is, I'm still trying to master eating to live. It's, it's hard to master. 1991, 1990, I stopped eating beef and pork and chicken and hamburger. It's suicide, self-murder, and that's the actual reason I stopped doing it because of a KRS-One song. Forget what the people said. 
You know, oh, this is not bad for you. Fries not bad for you. I didn't care about that. But when I heard Karis once say that, I said, I got to stop this stuff. And what was that, 89? I'm not sure. My philosophy. And I said, I'm going to stop this stuff. And um, I stopped in 1990. And then I went back and started eating all of it again. And then I said, okay, well, let me just eat this a little bit and that a little bit. Let me, whatever. I was eating tuna like every day for a while, trying to stick with something that could help me eat to live. But uh, finally in 1991, I stopped beef and pork and that was for 27 years that time. Somebody said I ate some pork, which looked like a chicken breast because I still ate chicken and fish. Uh, and so that would have been 24 years for pork and 27 years for beef, and then I started eating beef again in 2018. I think that party was 2015 or so-ish. So, you know, I, I did those things, and I stopped eating what could cause issues, how to eat to live, but it didn't stop causing issues because some of the other issues are sugar and salt and um, high fat content, <laughs> you know, and that's how you eat to live. You have to find the things that work well with your body. Everybody says vegan or vegetarian. And probably those things are the greatest thing. But meat will also um, give you protein. Can you get protein in beans and, and uh, not quinoa, but um, I can't think what it's called. Uh, tofu or whatever it is, um, soy, you can get protein in those things, but meat is something about meat, man. <laughs> it's something about chicken. It's something about, uh, turkey. It's something about, uh, fish. And I know they say, oh, you don't eat stuff with a face, but it's something about them that I feel that it does my body right. But it's something about beef. Uh, and again, I don't eat pork, but it's something about beef that does my body wrong, you know? Uh, but I think all of that can, work with, and I'm not a doctor, check on your doctor with all this stuff, but if you eat it in moderation and you have a plan to cleanse your body on a consistent basis, I remember uh, Beverly Hills Cop said, uh, you know how movies try to put stuff in it to, that gives you knowledge, um, so Beverly Hills Cop uh, put this in there, I think it was one of the one of the police officers, uh, Bogomil and I forgot their names. But anyway, he said, oh, I read the article. And it was just the, it was just a producer trying to show his knowledge. I read the an article and it says by the time you're 50 years old, if you eat uh, red meat, it'll be about five pounds of undigested red meat in your gut. And that is if you don't work on cleansing. If you don't work on cleansing your body and doing the things and make sure you have this great uh, 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 digestion program and and get your probiotics, prebiotics and, and eat your vegetables, yeah, maybe you'll have five pounds of undigested red meat in your gut or your bowels or wherever. But if you find a good cleansing program, if you find good food to eat and you still want to eat meat, you can still eat meat. Now, if you just don't want to do it for religious reasons or if you don't want to do it because it has a face or you don't like it's not cut kosher, the blood is not drained, or if you don't like it for those reasons, okay, it is what it is. But if you want to eat meat and beef, as long as you find yourself a good body cleansing program, you don't need it as much as you're young, but still cleanse your body somehow, some way, uh, whether it be by laxative or whether it's, it's something with the, the doctors prescribe or whether it's just by eating roughage or roughage or how do you say it? Roughage. Um, eating uh, spinach and uh, collard greens and, and different green vegetables that can take that stuff out of you, nuts and stuff that make sure you're not allergic to nuts, you know, but eating uh, the things that can go through your body and help to cleanse that out. Or again, I've used a colon cleanser before um, and I hope to use one coming up here soon again because I did that like 20 years ago and it was like my body felt like the greatest I had felt in years, you know, so, you know, even if you are eating healthy and uh, if you don't cleanse your body, if you don't, of course, drink the amount of water you should drink, you're not going to eat to live. But again, eating to live fruits, of course, vegetables, according to your understanding and what your doctor tells you, her fruits are bad too. It's like if you eat too many apples now, come on, man, 
And that's why these food pyramids and everything doesn't work for everybody's body, everybody's religion, everybody's uh, body type. So you may not be able to eat bread. You may might be gluten, uh, have a gluten allergy. Peanuts, people have peanut allergies, shellfish allergies. So, you know, certain things you may not be able to do, you know. So if you are not able to do it, then don't do it. But if you find a way to eat fruits and vegetables and eat them on a consistent basis, drink water, cleanse your body, you can still eat some of the other things uh, in moderation, in moderation. All right, guys, I'm going to move on from that because I'm not an expert Check with your doctor on anything I just said, how to eat to live. Uh, once we do the full episodes, we'll talk about some stuff. I'll have some stuff ready. All right, guys, team business. I kind of spoke about this in employees, employee workers and goals. And what would you tell your younger self? But you need a team in business. No matter what you do, you need a team in business. I have so many examples of that, but I'm going to tell like three examples. One is... When I came up rapping, we had this song called A Group of Individuals, and that was some of the best times in my life where I felt like everybody was a part, even though we had our own organizations, everybody was a part of DTD, which was Dark Tent Diamond uh, product Productions, and that was my skin tent, and Diamond is my mind, and all of that. So, you know, uh, I felt we were a team. And we could have accomplished a lot. But since we all were young and we all have various other teams, it didn't work like I wanted to. But for that year, half a year or two years or whatever, it worked well. You know, uh, team and business. Another thing, man, I had this my buddy. We did a lot, especially for the last over the last throughout the last 10 years with um, desktop or with uh, content creation, videography. And we just didn't have the team we needed. We, we were building teams. And we had the team in ourself, but that's why that's why it was so hard to build ourselves because we didn't have the team. We had the finances to build a team. We didn't have people that says, hey, this is how you build a team. And our business failed. Ultimately, the businesses that we did together failed. Ultimately, we had some wins. We met some people. He's still working with some prominent people. I was working with some of them. But, you know, it ultimately failed because we didn't have a team that gelled together. You know, a team that could see that total vision and get the funding and do the work and and make it work at the ending. And so we can keep going. Needed a team for that. And then this last example I'll give you. Was that the last example or the second example? Yeah, last example. So the last example I'll give you is uh, the same guy, wealthy guy that I used to work with, um, work for. Um, he asked me if I wanted to start a franchise before he actually sold the company. And that was the first thing I said. I don't have a team. I need a team. And that was the first thing he said. Yeah, you do need a team. I wish I would have jumped in there and said, no, nah, I'm going to do it, man. I'm going to get my team. Because, again, always excuses or life decisions. But it would be a different story right now because that corporation, he went on to sell it. He's wealthy now. And now that corporation is exploding. So I would have either had a part in that corporation with my own or I would have sold and went off with him, you know, depending on if I was able to create uh, what I was able to create. And that would have I would have had about six to seven months to do so because he mentioned that to me in uh, 2021, August 2021. So and then he sold the company in uh, April 2022. So. I would have had a good eight months to build that store with no issues. I mean, well, no, with no issues on this company, that company it would have been his company and his vision and never know. But again, I made a decision because I felt that I needed a great team. But that's what you do. You can hire teams, man. So if you have to hire a team, uh, if it is from Fiverr, YouTube, I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, Shopify, whoever is your team, get a team, man, for business. Get a team for business because that's going to be the best thing for you. Um, you can be like me and try to do things solo and it takes longer and I get small wins and small successes and a little money here and a little fame there, two gigabytes of fame. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't blow up like you really wanted to blow up. So get you a team, guys. If you 
want to do business, you get a team if you want to have success in your business. Can you do it solo? Yes. Is it better with a team? Yes. So you may have to get a team that uh, people just want to be part of your team because I've always I've always worked with other owners. I've always worked with other owners. So if you are working with an owner, they want to accomplish their stuff as well. So it's, it's going to always be a push. You know, I know, matter of fact, I know some people who they came up together, great promotions together. And now they're they're both doing their different things. And that's just what happens with teams. They, they go separate. They're separate, especially if they're both bosses, both bosses. But I know some employees that have been on teams for 20, 30, 40, 15, 50 years. I don't know anybody has been on in somebody's employment for 50 years. I'm sure they're out there, though. So they were the ones that were an asset to your team. I got one more thing and then I'll move on. So my wife, she used to have a full time job uh, for a multi million dollar corporation and she was an asset to their team. Not only did she come in as a part time worker, that worker trained her. Then she helped that worker do everything. That worker was let go. Then she did all that workers um, manager, all that manager. Let me let me put it out there. She did all of that manager's work. Then they found another manager, which was educated. Of course, they wouldn't have, wouldn't have hired her. And she helped her get into the job because my wife at that time knew more about that corporation than she she did. And you know, my wife was there for 10 years and, and they let her go in 2016, but she was a key part of their team. And I guarantee you, she would have stayed a key part of their team if we would have took the option. We were supposed to move to New Jersey, so on and so forth. There was an option on the table. But um, I tell you, uh, they let her go and she would have stayed part of that team. I have no doubt that she'd probably be part of that team right now because that is my wife. She's a team player especially if it's with a big corporation. And again, you get benefits and you're getting stuff like that. And that's the thing why teams fall apart because they want certain benefits, real benefits, money benefits, monetary, uh, whether it's health benefits, uh, whatever benefits, they want some benefits. And if they don't get them, like they said in Think or Grow Rich, nobody's going to work without pay for a long time. Some people are going to start and say, we can help the vision. I'm in your team, but they're not going to see your vision through. When your vision may, brings no money, they're not going to see it through. It's not what they do. If it's a spouse, maybe. If it's a real close friend, maybe. But nine times out of 10, they're not going to see your vision through. So that's what you need, a team. And, and here's, here's some of the best teams to get now. Go to Fiverr and pay for a team. It's not a consistent person to person team like you want it to be, but it's a great team. They have a task. They get that task complete and you can find everything there, everything there. So anyway, you need a team in business. Uh oh, what is you doing? Are you recording? Are you not recording? Let's stop it. All right, guys, we're about to wrap it up. We've been here for a good hour, so this is good. This is good. We are on number six. Would have been my sixth episode, and this this is a good one to end on today. Uh, are you my soulmate? Let's be. We'll, we'll pick back up, but this is episode six. So this has been an issue in my life. <laughs> this is this has been a real issue in my life, guys. What I'm about to tell you. So Andrew Carnegie and Napoleon Hill. Uh, they were a team and it's interesting. I read that. I started reading that book at 14, 15, whatever, really heavy. Of course, I've heard all the principles, heard the principles well before that. It's a 1937 book, uh, which by the way is, um, uh, in public domain, the original manuscript. So you can actually take that book and pull from, uh Oh, is it time to go? The light went out. Hold on. <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm not moving, so you can actually take that book, pull from it, and make original works out of his uh, copyrighted work, uh, original manuscript. And and I, I don't think he did that. 
by mistake because Napoleon Hill's rich, his foundation is rich, his people that hold his copyrights are rich. So I believe at some point at the end of his life, he said, you know what? I'm going to give this. I've already given it to you. You have to buy it and we own it, but I'm going to give it to everybody so you can use it. Like if you search Think and Grow Rich, there's a million publishers now. 20, 25, 30 years ago, it was like one or two publishers maybe or so. I mean, maybe more, but now anybody and everybody is using that text and that manuscript, especially the original manuscript, they're using it and they're creating income with it and they're creating new books. The Secret, although he came up with his own feel to it, which I've never read it, so I don't want to speak totally on it, but I know Napoleon Hill mentioned The Secret. In his book, I don't think he ever really told you the secret. You had to come up with it in your mind what the secret was. And I have my thoughts on what the secret is. But my understanding is the secret tells you what the secret is. So I guess I better read it to find the secret. Anyway, so Andrew Carnegie and Napoleon Hill, the Carnegie name, Carnegie Mellon, all of that name. You see a lot of it in Pittsburgh, the Steel City. Um you'll see a lot of Carnegie stuff there. Of course, there's Carnegie Hall and so and so rich, wealthy guy, the guy that Napoleon Hill got the secret of success, think and grow rich from. And my understanding, which was a, a faltered understanding was, and this is what he did, but it was a faltered understanding. Carnegie Hill said, I'm going to give you this secret, but you got to be willing to work for it for 20 years I'm going to give you this understanding. I'm going to make all the introductions you need, give you a place to stay. And I'm sure he had a lot of lot more benefits. I'm going to give you a place to stay, but you're going to build it. You know, you're going to build it. And I don't think I'm mixing the uh, mixing the um, stories, but he did it for a dollar. I think I am mixing the stories. But anyway, he worked for somebody for a dollar. But. I mixed those two together, work, working with Andrew Carnegie, him taking all these expenses, not paying him anything or whatever. But anyway, that was always my thought process. To work with a wealthy guy, most most of the time it was a guy because there's a different dynamic when it's a man and a woman. Can it? Can we be friends? Sure. Can we do great things together? Sure. But it's a lot of stuff that gets... Uh, and. and in between a man and a woman. So especially if you got a wealthy woman, you know, it's, it's totally different. But anyway, uh, so I was always not looking for a wealthy guy, but as I would come across and I saw someone who was wealthy, I didn't want their money. I would say, hey, let's do this at a low cost. Let's create what you want, because what I'm creating is going to show what I do. Primarily, my whole life, I've done videos, images, pictures. And I created content. I was a desktop publisher, did that in high school. Uh, so I knew the concept of that. I could create flyers and books. I could create uh, stickers, whatever we needed, I could design. And if we couldn't, we get someone else to design it. But then I can play with the logos after they designed it. And I did that for many years, you know, uh, back when I was 21, 22, 23, 24, whatever. So I always knew, and, and I've worked with a few wealthy people, but what happens is I don't take my correct pay and I work for them. And then it becomes a struggle with me because I'm doing work. We see pay come in and I may get a little bit of reward, but it's not enough to live on. So then I'm not able to live correctly. Uh, then I got to struggle. And they have their wealth or their stuff now, which is theirs. And then I either have to ask to borrow or say, hey, I need this. And then it just throws the whole relationship off. So this Andrew Carnegie, Napoleon Hill thing was totally different. 1920 or something, you know, 19, whenever it was. And Napoleon Hill was a college graduate or work, went to college and I think he's going. I don't know if he was going to college at the same time, and he was a, a Caucasian male in a Caucasian area, and things were different. Uh, things were cheaper. Money was scarce, but things were cheaper. Uh, five cent bread or something, you know, two cent pop or something like that. So things, life was simple, 
So when you needed a place to stay, it was easy, especially if you knew an Andrew Carnegie. It's not like this in modern times. So the wealthy people I work with, I wanted to do this Andrew Carnegie, Napoleon Hill relationship because everything I do, videos, images, pictures can be used for everything everybody else does. But what I found out, especially in the last five to six years, even though everybody uses videos, images and pictures, if I'm working with a club owner or I'm working with a, a chef or if I'm working with a, 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 a wine owner or and these are people I've actually worked with, if I'm working with a, a bakery owner or if I'm working with these people, uh, all the are po politicians. They all use videos, images, pictures to to do their marketing. But it, you me personally, you'll get tied in so much to one or another. You know, and this takes a little bit away from the wealthy person, but you get tied in. So even though everyone uses that, you still need to focus. You don't see P&G uh, going to GE and do marketing for them. Of course, it's not set up that way, but you get my point. So what I did personally was I would use my various skills with everybody, but then it will become overwhelming. So that made me uh, give bad customer service. It would become overwhelming because uh, I wasn't able to I had to work all of these places to get my pay. Uh, I had to remember all of these. Uh, what are you saying? All of these combinations. Or I, wanted, I don't want to say combinations. All of these things to complete my jobs. So after I left one, which I was the owner, I was the boss. I was the owner. So I felt good about it, but then I had to go shoot video for this person. Then I had to go shoot video for this person and this person. Then I got to edit, 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 and it's good. But if you don't have a team and if you're by yourself and if you move from, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A, I'm going to say subject, but from subject to subject, it gets overwhelming or industry to industry. Let's use that word. If you move from industry to industry, I'm going to cut my mustache. It keeps getting on my lips. But if you move from industry. If you move from industry to industry, it, it gets um, confusing. I'm a witness, man. I wanted to be so much to so many people. I wanted to find that Andrew Carnegie, not necessarily for him to pay all my expenses, but for me to show I'm going to make you money. I'm going to make you rich. And that's what Napoleon Hill uh, was to Carnegie. Didn't make him rich, but he took his thing to make people rich and gave it to the world. So it was because of Andrew Carnegie's thought process and knowledge. And he got did all of these reports, sent him to Ford and sent him to um, Firestone and all of these places that uh, Napoleon Hill wouldn't have been able to connect or get with or or set up himself. Carnegie Hill set that up. So when I had that in my mind for this many years, so many years, that should have been my vision. And, and it happened once or twice. But my vision should have been to get with a guy who has the, the means, the vision, the focus, work with him and create my plan. Because I have so many plans. As a matter of fact, before we get out of here, here's, here's another plan I, I came up with. It's called the Penny Petro Machine. Now, this is the bomb. Basically, turning your cash, uh, turning your coins of cash to gas. But it was also, you know, putting stuff. This is well before everybody was using the logo, MasterCard Visa logo. I had that idea. Um, and most of, mostly everything was, uh, you actually had to have a Visa card or a secure card. I had the idea to do some of the stuff like PayPal's now and and um, not necessarily PayPal Cash App where you place money on that card or people send you money, so to speak. Or no, I didn't have I'm not going to say I did peer to peer <laughs> money, but uh, where you put your money, you got coins and you put it in there and you add it to your own money or someone else has coins. You add it to your own logo card. So I have many ideas, man. But what it took was for me to get with that one person, but I always wanted to be everybody's mostly everything. 
So that Andrew Carnegie, Napoleon Hill, wealth theory is what I'm going to call it. Is that what I called it? Wealth theory? The wealth theory didn't work for me. Could it have worked for me? Probably in this day and time, probably not. Maybe actually, actually it could have in, early, in the early 90s. Uh, my friend, Mr. Barber, uh, very wealthy. I saw his vision. He helped me with desktop publishing, created very, very little money for him, but he was glad to have somebody uh, building. And a matter of fact, another guy who came out of his camp, so to speak, is a multimillionaire now. You know, I mean, he did it by himself. Mr. Barber didn't do it, but he came to Mr. Barber's store, you know, and got certain vision, you know, but uh, and that was the opportunity I had. But again, saw a different opportunity and that's that. So that was the closest thing to Andrew Carnegie, really I actually stayed at his house a few times and helped him move and all of that type of stuff. Um, but that was the closest thing to an Andrew Carnegie on a, on a lower level that would have worked for me. But there's been other wealthy men that I've worked for that I could have took it to the next level. So anyway, guys, let me talk about what's coming up. And I got a whole hour here. I just, I could have did this early. I could have did this early in the year, but I didn't want to do it. I, I wanted to say this. I wanted to say that. I didn't know if I could say this. I didn't know I could say that. I wanted my, uh, I didn't want all this rough, you know, what's this rough stuff? I wanted my hair cut. I wanted this trim and I trim and then I don't do it. I trim and I don't do it. Then I start working heavy in Tennessee and driving, didn't do it, didn't do it. But here we are, guys. The guide cast prequel is half done. Almost half done. I had 13 episodes. So the prequel is half done. We, we there, guys. We are here. A lot of information, too. A lot of information. And we're going to detail these episodes and make them a lot better. These are short episodes right now. But we're going to make them a lot better. Do some study. Get a team. Do some research. And have these things great. And, and maybe I'll just come to you like this for a while until... I really get a great vision for it. But this is what it was. I didn't have the greatest vision. Now, I'm about to be cool. I bought these glasses and I forgot all about them. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So now I'm so cool. And you, you can see the uh, sofa behind me. And you can see my, my uh, phone better. So let me read the rest of these things. I got to get them close now. I can't read. <laughs> my eyes, guys. My eyes are really changing. I used to have the perfect vision for all of my life. Never wore glasses. Half the people in my family wore glasses. I've never worn them. Son, wife, sister, mom, stepfather, all these people. I've never wore them in 19, or 20, 2019. It really started kicking in. Didn't really care. And in 2021, it said you better start caring. Cause like, right, like right now, I, I can barely read the time. Uh-oh, it stopped. Did it stop? Did you stop? <laughs> okay, let's stop it real quick. Right now I can barely read the time on my on my clock and don't let me, don't get me started with what's on my computer. I see lines and stuff that my wife used to tell me. I see this image, I see that. But I never understood it. But I do understand it now. And that's why I use those readers that you saw. And got to get my prescription back. I need my eyes back. Come on. Need my eyes back. Anybody know anything about fixing some eyes or something? Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on a little later. But I don't know. We'll see. So anyway, let me read some more uh, to end this uh, guy cast prequel beginning. Mm, so we had episodes one. This may be the last time. Episode two, employer versus worker. Greg Reese, the cameraman. Episode three, what would you tell your younger self? Episode four, how to eat to live. Episode five, team, business, business in a team, team in a business. Episode six, Andrew Carnegie, Napoleon Hill, wealth theory. So that's where I ended, guys. Episode seven is, are you my soulmate? We're going to talk a little bit about relationships um, we got EP or episode eight driving across the USA. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my escapades across the USA, USA, man. I've done, I know I've logged a million miles at least, you know, I've driven so much. I can't, I can't for sure verify that, 
but I know on at least three cars I hit a, a, a hundred thousand miles or more. And again, driving across the nation, I'm sure I've I've uh, logged, uh, if nothing else, a half a million miles uh, just driving. But I'm pretty sure I've, I've logged a million miles. I'm going to try to gauge that. I'm going to think about all the cars I've driven and all of the places I've went. And it's going to be very hard. But anyway, driving across the USA, I'm going to talk about that. Uh, episode nine, millions of hits method. Guys, I have an audio book. Make sure you pick up that audio book right now. It's free, you know, and even after that is like six bucks. So just pick it up. It's free. Download it. You have to sign up with Amazon, but you're probably going to do that anyway. Pick up the Amazon uh, audio book. It's, it's actually um, audible. Millions of hits method and book. So I'm going to create a millions of hits method. The way I've created my millions of hits online, by the way, you got over 500 million views. Uh, most of them are Google local guide, but they're big keep views. And I got about 30 million, uh, my personal views all over the web. So, you know, it's a good thing. And now with this YouTube shorts, everything is, is booming as far as hits. Now my money doesn't match the hits, but we on the way, baby. YouTube is changing some things. So it's coming. So stay tuned for that. Millions of Hits Method, the audio book. Get that now, right now, actually. Just search Millions of Hits, Greg Reese. And you're going to find that book right now. Uh, episode 10, Internet Millionaire. I uh, used to have this series that I wanted to do called Internet Millionaire. Somebody said, you're not a millionaire. But I said, I know how to study Internet Millionaires. So I'm going to bring that back out. Uh, stories with Greg Reese. Stories with Greg Reese. All this stuff is stories. Uh, but I'm going to have some specific stories like I always tell this story online about my um, being stopped, my car stopping in Butte, Montana. Uh, and this this great couple uh, just did the unthinkable. So I'll talk about that uh, over and over again because it's, it's just great. I'm still here. So, you know, the unthinkable was a great thing. Uh, VIP music publishing company, videos, images, pictures, music publishing company, guys. It's taken me years upon years upon years to get any money from BMI, but it's always been my fault. Uh, maybe in, until 2008, but up in, up to 2008, maybe not my fault. Just I didn't have any popular music that was online that uh, or that was on the radio. So, you know, I was on TV, but again, stuff I didn't know, didn't think about clearance forms or not clearance forms, but um, public, you know what I'm saying, the publishing, registering forms. So we'll talk about music publishing. I'm learning so much now. I got my first, um, <laughs> I got my first uh, royalty, but that was for writing on BMI. So hopefully I'll get some publishing royalty soon. And then... Um, We'll talk a little bit more about that. Learn a lot more. And then uh, it was a thing. We might not even talk about this episode because I had a, always a millionaire's helper, never a millionaire. That's so negative, guys. <laughs> That's such a negative thought process. Always a millionaire's helper, but never a millionaire. Let me tell you the remedy for that. You can work with millionaires. You can help with millionaires. You can do whatever, but don't stop your vision very simple to be a millionaire now there's work in it but again you got 10 a ten dollar product sell a hundred thousand yeah, of course you have to sell more because there's going to be taxes but you get the you get you get the uh the gist of that you got a twenty dollar product sell a hundred thousand sell fifty thousand you get my point so it's easy to be a millionaire. The concept is easy. The, the, the grind is harder, but it's so much easier with the Internet. So don't just be a millionaire's helper. Don't just be a millionaire's helper. You become a million. Don't just be a millionaire's helper. You can become a millionaire. All right, guys, it's Greg Reese. It's the guide cast. The beginning. Finally, finally got the beginning. Finally started the beginning of the guide cast and I'm happy about it. Let's wipe my face off. I've been here for an hour or so. 
So it's about time for me to get out of here anyway. And uh, I'm going to get some driving done. I feel like I've accomplished a lot. I really do. Here's the mic. Rock the mic. Next time I'm going to, when I'm doing, I'm going to have this mic sitting a little bit like that. Somewhere around there. Yeah, watch this, guys. See that? Boop. Stop recording. Boop. There you go. I love it, man. HyperX. This has been good to me. The only thing I don't like about this one is I don't know how to adjust the mic on my um, recorder. And the mic that we were using, my wife's mic, had a, a little adjuster on the actual mic. So I think ultimately I like that because you can gauge or not gauge, you can adjust your your loudness on her mic, you know, and although it doesn't work with my system anymore, that's why I got this one and I didn't want to spend too much money. This was 60 bucks or this was actually 37 bucks, originally 60 bucks. But um, I, I uh, let's see, something's going on with that. So I didn't want to break the bank and I couldn't use hers anymore. But I, so I got this one. But this is a great mic. Only thing, I, like I said, when I'm rapping, I got to stand back, which uh, I think that's probably how they do it in the studio anyway. Or they, of course, they adjust it on their um, platform. So there's my laptop right there. Just recently got a new laptop. And uh, let's look at this room, guys. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to stop and flip.